Okay, so today we're gonna be talking about my favorite run scheme in Madden 25, and that is the duo or the power without a puller. One of the main reasons that I like the duo in Madden is because with zone-based blocking systems, a lot of good players learn gap shoots. They'll go stand in some cockamamie spot. Ooh. What? What? Lock their user in place and fly through the gap untouched to make a tackle in the backfield. Sometimes you have to have a reliable man-to-man -man blocking system where you understand your rules, you know where your opponent's standing, and you call the right run at the right time. And I find that the duo is one of the best ways to do so. So if you guys enjoy this type of content, make sure you guys are subscribed right here to the Zan Madden YouTube channel. Hit that notification bell. This is going to be a good one. Now, the duo, if you're looking for a playbook that has a ton of them, I would look no further than the Los Angeles Chargers because Harbaugh basically ran this and also a great defense at the University of Michigan to a national title last year, and he brought this flavor to his playbook in Madden and this duo can be found in a lot of different formations so kind of starting off with some of my favorites we have some heavier personnel here in the wing tight Z the wing pair has a duo the wing slot offset has what's called Z close duo this is a hidden package within this formation that actually exists in the Seattle Seahawks offense now believe it or not I run the Seahawks offense not the Chargers but the Seahawks does have a little bit of duo flavor from the gun as well like I said they have this and then they also have a three receiver formation that has a duo as well now speaking of three receiver formations that have duo believe it or not the bunch strong offset which is probably the best formation or one of the top three or four formations in Madden has duo and this is specific to the chargers offense now there's a lot of pro madden players in the community that laud the chargers offense for their bunch strong they got the corner strike they've obviously got flood and dagger uh and then they've got some other great plays as well but this duo is a run scheme that you guys are gonna be able to if you like bunch strong you get a great run here in this particular breakdown with the under center there's also going to be some duos as well you'll notice that there's 26 duo in the wing pair and as you kind of like search through your uh your under center stuff you'll notice duo is kind of smattered in they've got a wing tie you and uh so on and so forth i mean there's duo in a lot of different places in this book so you guys will definitely really enjoy this uh this breakdown so let's kind of talk about what this is or how it's blocked uh and the best way that i can kind of explain this to you is uh and i've already said it once duo is what they call power without a puller now zone based blocking systems are built on double teams and combo blocks up to the second level but sometimes when you're talking about a zone in particular like a wide zone or a stretch type run your offensive line is all going to step a direction and they're blocking the first thing that flashes in front of their eyes in terms of opposing team's color and this creates cutback lanes off of over pursuit now with a duo this is man-to-man -man blocking schemes everybody's got a target that they're going to block now the best way that i can explain how duo is blocked is basically what is called down gap buddy system okay uh, if you guys go read up on duo you're going to see a lot of this uh being mentioned in the different articles that you'll read but the offensive line has a designed run side so in this case we're running duo to the right the general rule of thumb for the offensive line is as follows. You look at the backside gap away from the run side. So if we're running duo to the right in this particular context, you're going to see starting with the left side of the line, they're going to check down a gap. Now, starting with the left tackle, number 70, his responsibility is to kick out the edge man on the line of scrimmage. A lot of times you'll notice in a zone-based blocking system, they will leave the weak side edge unblocked completely and say, you know what, if he's athletic enough to make a play, we can live with that. Or we can option off of it, or we can create misdirection off of that with end arounds and things like that. In this system, that's not the case, okay? So number 70 is gonna kick out that edge. Now, when we take a look to number 77, his first rule is, is there somebody in the backside gap away from the run side? And in this case, there is. You see that the left B gap is plugged by what is called a three technique. Number 77 must block him. So his responsibility is to block that guy. Now let's look to the center. His backside gap, number 75. Is there somebody plugging it? No. So in this case, that backside gap is not filled. So now he is going to do a buddy block. A lot of different vernaculars here for the way that these combo blocks work. You'll hear some people talk about a combo block in the A gap known as an alpha block, where he's going to buddy block with number 79. And their responsibility is to then combo up 
to the weak side linebacker number zero in Navy, depending on whether he goes through the backside A gap or he wants to kind of scrape over the top of that combo block into the right side B gap, they have to combo block. So 75 and 79 double team on the right of screen nose tackle, the one technique. And then they're responsible for comboing based off of how number zero in blue plays. So number 79, you could already tell he's part of that combo block. He's got somebody in his on the backside there. So you're going to end up with, you know, 79 and 75 comboing to zero. Now let's talk about number 76. Does he have anybody in a backside gap here? Meaning, is there anybody lined up in the right B gap? No, there's not. So his responsibility is now going to be to combo block with the tight end on the right of screen defensive end, which is Williams. So Hurst is going to combo block with our right tackle, and they are responsible for comboing up to the inside linebacker, Jones, in this particular context. Now, in Madden, will these rules always play out? No, not necessarily, but this down gap buddy system that you will see in Duo is kind of in general how this is programmed. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna kind of snap the ball and we're gonna focus primarily on 75, 79, 76, and 88. And our hope here with this is that, and I'm gonna click off to this edge here, that we see those blocks play out. And that is basically exactly what occurs. Now, before I go into a little bit more detail here, if you guys enjoyed this, again, it's absolutely free to subscribe here to the channel, but you guys should also take a look at my strategy website, gridirongameplans.gg. While I do focus on competitive Madden, and sometimes that's not real football for a lot of players, I do try to liken what's happening on the competitive level to what we see in real life to help explain, or oftentimes use simulation football to counter things. So this video, for instance, with this duo, we're going to try to explain why why this is important for attacking dollar or three three odd or some of these other metas that are very very prominent that a lot of players struggle with gridiron is focused on the meta or the most effective tactics available of competitive madden what the pro players are doing why it works and most importantly how to counter it and sometimes the how to counter is something simulation like a duo block you guys can unlock the entire website for $9.95 a month. That's all offensive and defensive game plans on the website and our weekly vault content that is uploaded to keep you guys on top of the ever-changing trends in the game. We have lab sessions every single Wednesday inside of our Discord at no additional charge. So you guys can meet with me, ask me questions about what you're struggling with, and we can work through it together to help you improve on the spot. So our first rep was a rather good one. I mean, we saw the down gap buddy system here in real time. Seven. 70, blocking backside edge. 77, blocking backside solo. 75 doesn't have a lineman in the backside gap, so he's gonna combo with 75 and they're gonna work their way up to zero. Because zero flashed off of this to the right side, you see 79 come off the combo block and be prepared to pick him up. 75 keeps his leverage and I'm able to read this duo block and make a correct choice. So this is a basically man-to-man -man blocking system with rules. We're going to get these combo blocks, but then they have man-to-man -man blocking rules based off of how the linebackers flow. Now, if we were to pay attention to the right side of the line here with number 76, and number 88, you see the duo block. Well, not really. This is why I'm saying sometimes Madden's a little bit weird. What you would expect is 76 and number 88. Working the double team on Williams, and then working up to the second level. In this case, Madden decided it would be wiser to just go ahead and have them block one-on-one. -on -one. I don't agree with that. It could be blocked differently. You could also run other duos in the game to see if you get better results. Sometimes the receivers in the bunch can impact things. So let's go ahead here and call wing slot offset Z close duo. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change my front. We're no longer in a three down lineman front. Let's go into uh, maybe a four, four across. So uh, this is a two, four technically, but it, it's a four down lineman across the front here. And uh, let's go ahead here and call cover three. So the defense is respecting this offensive alignment here. As you see, we have our five linemen, two tight ends to the right, and then our receiver is actually coming in as a wing. Now, based off of our down gap buddy system, let's start off with kind of understanding how should we block this. Now, the key thing with this is probably going to be the presence of the receiver um 
this can sometimes be a situation where the receiver will basically combo block with the tackle. Um, not really going to happen here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you guys to ignore the rules of the wide receiver. He's just kind of a body that hopefully gets in the way here because we are running duo right here again. He's definitely kicking out to the edge, just like he did in the last example. That receiver might help him. He might not. It depends on the defensive front. But as we kick in to the left guard, as you recall in the previous example, that left guard had somebody in the gap that he needed to block to the left on. In this case, nobody's there. So what's he going to do? He's going to buddy block with our center, and then they are going to be responsible for number zero. On the right side here, we're looking at number 79, right guard. Does he have anybody in the left A gap? No. So what's he going to do? He's going to combo block with our right tackle, working up to, you guessed it, the right inside linebacker Jones. And then of course, on the right side of our line here, we now have basically the two tight ends and they're kind of in a spot where you might expect a double team on the edge working up to, you know, the safety that's showing blitz on that right side. But at least we understand based off of the way that this blocking system works, 77 and 75 are gonna combo up to the left linebacker and 79 and 76 are gonna combo block up to the right linebacker. But again, keeping in mind that sometimes the block targeting changes based off of the shell. So, you know, in certain cases, you're going to notice that the blocking is perfect. In other cases, you're going to notice it's not. So you see right here, this kind of worked. We certainly got the combo block that we were looking for on the right. Now, in this example, what you could argue is that the presence of this left side receiver is kind of wigging out the blocking assignments as a whole of the left side of the line. Certainly on the run side, we get our combo block between 79 and 76 working up to the linebacker. Now, in this particular instance, you see because the left side is a little confused, 79 actually combo blocked up to that weak side linebacker that I was kind of expecting 75 and 77 to handle. This is why I'm saying that depending on what offense you're running, what alignment you're in, a presence of another tight end or receiver might kind of change things for you. So what I want to do here is I'm going to take that receiver out of the equation. I'm going to kick that player all the way over to the right. And we're gonna run that exact same run here against this front. So let's use the system. Does our left tackle have anybody outside of him? No. So what are we expecting if we snap this ball? Combo block on that left side. And that's what we got right there. Now, because of the way that this was pursued, the read on this would be hopefully for 70 to come off that block. But you see that this allows us to kind of run this and, and be able to go through that weak side B gap. Okay, so we're starting off with the fundamentals of this particular alignment being good. So we got 70, nobody to the left side. So he's going to combo block with the left guard working up to the next level. Now let's look at the center. Does he have anybody in a defensive line technique to the left A gap? No. So we're fully expecting the combo block with the right guard on this play comboing up to the second level. Let's look at the right of screen tackle. Does somebody occupy the right B gap for him to block down on? No. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna combo block with the tight end on the right up to that second level linebacker. And then here we've got extra tight ends. So we've got the two extra tight ends. That second tight end is going to be nobody in that, what we would call C gap. So he's gonna hopefully combo block up with the other tight end on the edge hall, either to a linebacker that flows right, or maybe a edge player that flows left or right, okay? So when we snap this ball, look at how all these combo blocks work. And in fact, right there, because of the way that I said, again, that third tight end gets a little bit wonky. You notice that in the previous example, the wide receiver on the left kind of did some weird stuff or caused weird stuff to occur. In this example, everything blocked pretty well. And then we had uh, this one tight end that kind of was looking for somebody to help combo on. So again, what do you see? Double team here, double team here, double team here, and double team here. There are four double teams along this front, all responsible with man-to-man -man rules based off of how the paint flashes in front of them. If you see zero flash left, 75 takes him. If zero flashes right, 79 takes him. If 13 flashes left, 76 is supposed to take him. 
If 13 flashes right, 83 is supposed to take him. Or 81 could flash off of that. And, and, and again, you're building up and there's this extra layer of protection for this blocking system. Now, why does this matter? Why does this matter? Zan, you're teaching us all these systems, all these blocks in this system. Why does this matter? Well, think about zone-based blocking schemes, inside zone, stretch. What do Madden players do? They constantly stand in a spot and gap shoot the weak side gap, or they flash inside of the zone block based off, I know these guys are gonna combo block and can't peel to me from this rule. Well, Duo has built-in advantages against heavy user gap shoot reliant defenses whether you're talking dollar whether you're talking three three cub or three three penny whether you're talking about odd all these defenses where players like to kind of just stand at a spot and shoot through a gap this blocking scheme is far and away the best way to alleviate that so i hope that this video while it wasn't you know a crazy glitchy one play touchdown taught you something about why the duo in my opinion is one of the best blocking systems in madden i think that it handles three down four down beautifully um again i would avoid this when you're dealing with a bare front where they've got a guy head up on the center and guys head up on the guards because you're not creating double teams against that front but this is a great blocking scheme it's not zone based and a lot of players will struggle against this because it looks like zone and the gap shooting can be rather difficult. That's it for today's video, guys. I'm going to get up out of here. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you tomorrow. Until then, this is Ann. Get the lab and good luck.